Hello, this is Robert Rickover at Body Learning, and today my guest is Imogen Ragone, an Alexander Technique teacher and website designer in Wilmington, Delaware. And we're going to talk today about um, how to deal with the fact if you have a website, more and more people are accessing websites on mobile devices, smartphones, tablets, and the like. And what is, what's important for you to do to make sure you don't lose that uh, segment of the market? Uh, Imogen, welcome to the show. Uh, very glad to be here, Robert. So uh, you and I had uh, this same conversation, I think, about two years ago. Yes. And at the time, we said that what we were going to, the ideas that we were going to talk about would probably um, be obsolete in a couple of years. And I think that prediction has more or less come true, or at least to a certain extent. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> Which uh, and and we're talking now in uh, early uh, March of 2013, and um, I'm going to guess that in another couple of years we'll have to do this this little interview over again. But um, so the basic question we're we're addressing is: you have a website, and you've read somewhere, or you just know that more and more people are surfing the web using um, handheld devices. And if you've ever um, used one of those devices to access your your website or any or a lot of websites, you're going to find they're very, very difficult to uh, navigate and to see. Either they're shrunk down and everything's very tiny and hard to see, or you're just getting part of the page at a time. And so... Um, there is a there are a number of options for getting a mobile version of your website out there that um will take care of a lot of those problems and um I guess maybe the first place to start would be WordPress. Do you want to say a word or two about that? Yes, sure um so WordPress, um, for anyone who doesn't know what it is, um, was originally um, a system set up for blogging, but it's developed into a whole content management system for websites and blogs. Um, and the um, great thing about if you have a WordPress site, there's all sorts of different themes, which is sort of like the templates that you can use for your um, website um, and there's all sorts of add-ons which they call plugins which are really applications that you add on to the site and um, some of the themes themselves come with a built-in mobile version so that means that um, if you have that you've built your website using that theme um, if you then access your website on your mobile device mm -hmm. um, it will have automatically be converted into a format that is mobile friendly. So sized, the, the way the, um, the navigation, um, navigation is the links to the different pages. Um, those will be sort of changed in location and how you access them to make them more appropriate for the phone. Mm -hmm. um, and the pages are sized so you can see the text and it scrolls down. Mm -hmm. um, so you can easily read it on the phone rather than having to kind of shift your view from side to side and you right, know right. Um, it automatically. So that's a very nice feature. If the theme you're using doesn't have that, there are these plugins which can do the exact same thing for you and there's a variety to choose from. And if you want to get even more, and most of them are free mm -hmm. um, to give you a basic mobile, but you can if you want to really you know, customize the mobile experience. <laughs> there are, uh, you know. There are ways to do that yeah, as well. Yeah. But I, I would say for anyone um, who's listening who is contemplating a, a redo of their website, uh, that this might be a good time to, sw if they have a conventional website, to switch over 
to WordPress um, yeah, you because get you get that. One. You get two for one, and you get you also get uh, connected into a a kind of an ecosystem that allows um, for all sorts of other things like WordPress just a um, system. I just highly recommend for a number of reasons. Right. It has a lot of advantages over conventional. Oh, I mean, another major advantage for people is that it's very easy to make editing changes mm -hmm. without really much of any technical knowledge. It's it's a pretty pretty good platform. And there are apparently a couple of other platforms that I'm not as yeah, familiar with. Yeah, I think there with. are other ones that have a similar type system um but wordpress is by far the, the best known and the biggest and very very well supported there there are millions of people out there producing stuff for wordpress and almost all of it is free so well yeah. almost all that you would need that is you free. would need is for are there's free. lots of stuff you can pay for if you want you know to get extra it's usually more for design features really slick Right. Oh, they've got sure. really nice free ones so you know mm -hmm. unless you you know got money to spare right <laughs> but for 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 most websites that an alexander teacher would would have uh, wordpress really has it all i pretty much always just use yeah. i wouldn't i wouldn't free. get anything else anymore for for all of these reasons so that that's certainly one way to take care of your of the mobile mobile issue now, if you have a website that is not uh, that's like a, an HTML site that is uses a standard code, um, then you you have a couple of you, well, I think you really have three choices that I can think of. The first is you could convert it to a WordPress site, and if it's a fairly simple site, that is, it has just a few pages. A straightforward uh, site with four or five, six pages. Uh, to convert that to a WordPress site is not that um, big a job. I think you said that you've done that for people. I've done that for a, a few people now, and it, uh, you know, it can um, all be done in a day. You know, it can be done in a day. It might not be looking absolutely perfect in one day, but it will certainly be back up and running within hours so your site might be down for a little while but yeah. then it'll be back up as a wordpress and of course at that point it'll be mobile friendly mm -hmm. so that's one solution uh another solution if you have um well let's stay let's stay with fairly simple sites like uh, you know a basic site that has a number of pages but not vast number of pages and not a uh, very complex uh, navigation system. There is a, another alternative which uh, has recently appeared called dudamobile.com, D-U-D-A mobile.com, which is free um, for sites that have relatively small numbers of visitors. I think you can get... 500 page views a month for the mobile version and it'll kind of automatically convert your site into a mobile friendly site you can you can play around with it and adjust things it does a pretty good job yeah i agree it's it's mm -hmm. it's impressive really it's an impressive little piece of technology um, it's possible you can just do this yourself by going to their website. Yeah, it's really, they just... They make it easy. Talk it through, yeah. You just follow the steps. Right. Yeah. The free version of that um, it, um, will have advertising on it. And it seems like the advertising, it's all at the top and it's all for for their services. Uh, and if, if, you are, uh, if you are an individual teacher... Uh, chances are that free version will be more than enough to uh, take care of your needs, at least for now. Over, yeah. over time, as mobile searches become even greater, um, you might have to, to reassess. I, they have a premium version, which uh, is around $9 a month, I think, and I would say 
that if you are thinking of the premium version, you'd probably be better off um, simply paying the upfront money to get your site converted to WordPress. Because it would, within a couple of years, you'd be spending as much money on that premium version as you would on a yeah. redesigned WordPress site. I think you're probably right. Right. And then we have uh, the option of if you have a complex site, and, and I've had this issue with the complete guide to the Alexander Technique, it's really gigantic. Mm -hmm. um, to convert that to WordPress is, um, would just be a, a huge project. And some, of, some aspects of it would not convert very easily, like the lists of teachers and so on. I don't really know how, how that would work out. But an option, if you have a complex site, is to create a separate WordPress site that's a sort of a simplified version of your original site, maybe has the essential material there. And then it's pretty easy to set things up so that when someone goes to your regular site with a smartphone, they're automatically redirected to this uh, WordPress uh, stripped down version of your site. And it can be set up so that they can get back to your site as well. If, if you know, you want to have it possible to go in both directions. Yeah, it occurs to me, I don't know the answer to this question, but it occurs to me you may even be able to use the free version of WordPress as in the public version to do that. You mean the one that, the one that you get when you just sign up for WordPress? Yeah. So Which you wouldn't, I mean, what I mean is you wouldn't need to buy a domain. You could just... Oh, I suppose uh, I suppose I, you could, yeah. I mean, they didn't have all the plugins and everything that the uh, installed version has. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm sure some of the themes have a mobile version. Oh. Anyway, I'm just put. I don't know. That's just I'm putting that out there as a possibility. Right. Yeah. You. If you are going to get a backup uh, or sort of a mobile version of your site and keep the original one. Um, and, and you're going to use WordPress as that backup, You, I would say you're probably better off g getting a domain name. Um, it's not that expensive. Getting a, You could even have a name that has the word mobile in it or something to kind of distinguish it from your regular site. A domain name is pretty inexpensive. And if you're hosting with most uh, people who host websites, most companies and certainly uh, my hosting s system, the hosting for that uh, extra site wouldn't cost you anything because you can host That's more true. than one domain name. I think almost every hosting service uh, allows for that. So your costs would be just the domain name, maybe $10 a year, $12 a year, and getting a very simple WordPress site up and running and and then setting up the code for redirecting, which uh, I had to figure out for myself and I've done the research and I'd be happy to show anyone how to do that. It's pretty simple. So uh, anything, what else should we add on this? Well, just, I guess, to um, reiterate how important being mobile is now. Um, it is becoming crucial. Yeah. You know, my son, who's, you know, almost 18, I mean, he does everything on his phone. Mm -hmm. Does and all so his web surfing. As the, you know, and it's just, it's just going that way, I think, you know. Yeah, I think it's hard for people, um, well... People like myself, <laughs> I'll just take as an example. I, I find it very difficult to understand why anyone would want to do any serious amount of web surfing on a phone, but a lot of people do, and um, more and more people are doing it. And I think, unlike when we first talked, and it was just really the very big websites like Amazon and Facebook and, mm -hmm. you know, who had slick mobile versions, I think most companies of any size at all. Oh, I think so, we'll yeah. Have them now. And, you know, I know my son would say, oh, I don't like going to that site because it's not 
I use this one instead because there's a nice mobile version of, you know, something like that. So people are actually deciding where they want to go. Based on based whether on how easy it is to do on their phone. So In a way, it's a little bit analogous to the situation with regular websites um, 10, 10, 12 years ago. That is, some people had websites and some people didn't. And the people who didn't were at a significant disadvantage. But it wasn't the case that everybody had a website. Well, now everybody who's at all serious about being noticed has a website but now the the new frontier is is your website mobile friendly yeah. and i from what i can see for for the complete guide website about 25 to 30 percent of all the people coming to that site are coming from mobile devices mm. And that's been growing steadily. And I imagine within a few years, it'll be the majority of people. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, all the big companies uh, have long, long ago uh, had mobile versions. Any uh, Google, Amazon, Facebook, mm -hmm. any, as you say, any major company has a mobile but friendly I think, site. I think most. But most Alexander sites don't. Yeah. The majority, yeah. I would say, don't. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess one little technical detail that I discovered because I was using a, something that we were in our from our earlier conversation, I, uh, we had both created mobile sites using a different service from the one we just talked about, and it, it was a good stopgap measure. But one of the problems with it was that it kind of uh, didn't differentiate between tablets and smartphones. Uh, yeah. And really, um, for most Alexander sites, uh, they will work fine on a tablet. Yeah, and you really, you and don't you, want the mobile. You, you don't want, want the mobile the version. And the, the beauty of, um, it seems like the, the WordPress plugins uh, restrict it to just very small screens, and uh, which is what you want. And this Duda mobile system seems to do that. Mm -hmm. And if you're creating your own backup site and you want only people who are using very small screens to be automatically redirected, there is code uh, that you can easily put that I, that I talked about earlier that can actually specify the size screen that you want to include. Um, and, and basically, it's just the size of smartphones yep. or an iPod or something mm -hmm. like iPad. Mm -hmm. So not an iPad, an, um, an iPad and yeah, I. Pod, an iPod. I get those confused. <laughs> so you don't. So it's important that you differentiate between different kinds of mobile devices. Um, and also, I should say that um, the guy who's the president of Google has said that pretty soon, um, Google is there. The Google smartphone version is not going, when you do a search, is not yeah. going to include websites that don't have a mobile version. Mm. And So then you just won't even be in the game. You won't even be in the game. So it's pretty important to um, do something to get your site mobile ready. It could be a stopgap measure, um, such as we've talked about, or if you switch over to WordPress, uh, then you've got it all all taken care of. So I think I think we've kind of covered it. Anything else you can think of? Yeah, just uh, just a quick word about the WordPress mm -hmm. is not all themes automatically come with a mobile version. So if you're doing this yourself or you have another designer doing it, just make sure that they know that you want to have the mobile plugin or a theme that supports a mobile version. Yes, that would that would be really yeah. important i mean i can think of uh, just off the top of my head two or three alexander technique sites that cost a ton of money that many thousands of dollars which to me is a huge amount to pay for a website which are not mobile ready 
So, I won't say any more. Anyway, um, anything else you want to add? I think we've probably got it covered. <laughs> okay. So, uh, my, my guest has been uh, Imogen Ragone, who is um, a website designer and Alexander teacher in, El- in Wilmington, Delaware. Um, by the podcast, we'll put links to the um, to this new mobile site that we talked about, and um, and we're going to use this interview to replace a, our previous one. So, Imogen, thank you so much for being on the show. You're welcome. Thank you.